Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. Today, we're chatting with Tara Etheridge, elementary school librarian at International School Prague. Our spotlight today features Tara's perspective on the essential elements for coaching success and her thinking on the ideal personality of a coach. There are so many reasons for coaches and librarians to work together, and this conversation shares lots of opportunities that we can take together. If you enjoy any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more conversations like this, please subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell to find out every time we release a new episode. Remember, you can also listen to the full Coach Better episode wherever you get your podcasts. We are passionate about the impact coaching can have on student learning, school culture, and teacher professional growth, and we want to help you coach better. We've got some great opportunities for more learning after today's conversation, so stick around all the way to the end. All right, welcome back to another episode of Coach Better. Today, Clint and I are with Tara Etheridge. Tara, could you introduce yourself, please? Sure. My name is Tara Etheridge, and I'm currently the elementary librarian at the International School of Prague. I've been every kind of teacher you can imagine, from pre-K-4 all the way to grade 9 English, uh, language arts, and libraries scattered in between. And Tara and I work together at ISB, so this is like a nice little reunion to see you face-to-face after so many years. Since you've been in so many different environments, and some of them maybe have been more successful than others in terms of coaching, what do you think are the essential elements for coaching success? What do you need to build that coaching culture? That's my favorite question, because I feel that exactly the same thing that is essential for Coaching is exactly the same thing for librarians. So my number one go-to is um, approachability and personality. I feel like for both library and tech coaches, the more you are accessible to your staff, the more you are not intimidating to your staff, which I do think is really sometimes much more of an obstacle for tech coaches than it is librarians. Librarians, we're not, we're not too threatening in the world. But, um, but tech coaches, I mean, you have a vast amount of knowledge that a lot of time your staff doesn't have, and that is intimidating. I watch adults, you know, Kim and I have worked on different workshops where we work with teachers who are very, very afraid of using technology. So I think approachability, accessibility, and kind of that willingness to do what is necessary to help someone get started. And that might mean a whole lot of hand-holding at the beginning, um, many, many times, just to make sure that someone knows where they're going. I, so I think that's absolutely key, is making people feel comfortable so they're not afraid to ask for help. I think that's the first part. You said earlier in, the, in your response that a, a key part is uh, personality. Mm-hmm. How, what would you describe as the, your ideal tech coach slash librarian, since you said there's such an overlap, tech coach slash librarian personality type? Um, Well, I I would, dynamic, outgoing, totally ready to help, that whole thing of like, oh, Clint, I just realized, I saw you're doing um, endangered animals in third grade, I just saw the coolest website the other day, can I send it to you, that that kind of connection, and connection, sorry, I didn't say connection, that's my other huge one. I feel like every time we make a connection with a teacher, a student, a parent, it just grows our relationship. And that person, it, it builds trust. It, it's, it builds the trust to know that the next time you need something on endangered animals, you might think, oh, I'm going to ask Tara or I'm going to ask so-and-so because last time he or she was super positive and ready to help. Mm. I like that, that as, a, as a coach, you know, just keeping in the back of my mind, search for connection, searching for connections. And every connection, like you said, is, is another kind of, I don't know, pillar in building up that strong bridge. Um, 
it's it's a it's always a good reminder that it's not it's not always about what I say or about what I can tell you. It's how I can make it relatable to you and bring it bring it back to you. And how and how you make people feel. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll speak for myself too. How, how we make people feel, and the more comfortable someone feels, the more they're going to take a risk to ask uh, about some help, and maybe even be open to an idea that's beyond their comfort level mm-hmm. because you've been so nice or you've been so helpful as a coach. Before we started this call, I was telling Clint that I learned from you the like true meaning of you catch more flies with honey. Not that you would ever be trying to catch flies with vinegar like I know you well but just watching you at ISB I don't think I've ever seen anyone treat everyone with such consistent kindness and support and like just you are so good at never making anyone ever feel bad like you're just and I'm not saying that coaches make people feel bad or that I make people feel bad but you're just so good at it it's like really obvious And I remember watching you because when you came to ISB, it was a very difficult situation. People were not entirely happy with what was happening in the library in general. And there was a lot of turnover and it was all a little bit unpleasant. And I had been there for one year before you. And I remember thinking, God, I hope this woman knows what she's getting into. Because personally, I didn't really know when I got there. So and I, you just, all of this stuff, I just watched it in action. Thank you. That, that means the world to me because that's like as, as a librarian and as a human, that's what I pride myself most in. And I actually find it works really, really well um, all the time. Like I just have never seen it not, well, not go well. And I feel like that works. Um, I can get people to do things or to collaborate with me because of that, because they remember those small things. So I feel like that definitely um, also just goes into coaching as well, any sort of, because I actually see the librarian very much as a, as a coaching role in a way as well. Like the, the more we as librarians get into the classrooms ourselves and work with the tech coaches on stuff, then it just becomes coaching the teachers on how to make their classrooms more dynamic and literate, I think. Absolutely. And just the way that I, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be like gushy or anything, but the way that I watched you meet people where they were at, that is a lesson for all coaches because I know that I'm trying to say this in the nicest possible way. Sometimes it can be frustrating to do that same thing again and again and again, or be like, wow, like how is it possible that you're asking me this question? And that never ever phased you. And I would just watch and I'd be like in the corner, like, wow, look at that. Like, how was she doing that? That was a good lesson for me. I hope I'm allowed to be guffawing during this interview, but um, I I wholeheartedly agree. And I think honestly where that's coming from is I was that person. (laughs) Like even when I just said a minute ago, like honestly, even to this day, I have done so many Skype calls with authors, but I will not do it unless a tech person is sitting next to me. Um, And it's just one of those things that I, I probably at one point was that person who was like, what, can you show me again how to sync my calendar like 37 times? And so I knew myself that inside I truly did want to know how to sync my calendars, um, which I'm actually not sure I actually do know how to do. <laughs> but at the same time, no, like my point is I, I do feel like that like infinite level of patience is important. And I know Kim, you and I have talked about this over the years. Um, and that's why I wanted to do that tech train workshop that we did because yep. I think there's a few elements of education and knowledge that adults get really mired in, like worried about and feeling really dumb at the end of the day. And one of them is technology. And I think then people stop asking because they're afraid to look like they're not smart. And so the more that any of us can do um, as librarians, tech coaches, instructional coaches, anything, Anytime anyone admits they don't know something, you're being vulnerable. So how can we as people make people not feel vulnerable? Or yeah. So thank you. That, that means a lot to me. I'm glad that resonated. If you've enjoyed any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more great conversations about coaching with inspiring educators from around the world, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notifications bell to find out every time we release a new episode. To hear the full-length conversation, subscribe to the Coach Better Podcast wherever you get your podcasts.
And if you're looking for even more resources to help you coach better, head over to adurolearning.com slash coach better to explore over 20 online courses designed by coaches for coaches. Catch us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Aduro Learning to connect with us. See you next week on Coach Better Spotlight.